Hello and welcome to Bible Buddy. It's day number 47 and we will be reading from Leviticus 15 and 16. And let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this opportunity for us to read together. And we ask that you open our mind and our heart and um, our ears so we can listen and so we can absorb what you're telling us in these scriptures that we're about to read and I ask that the Holy Spirit come and intervene and show us and teach us um, the things that you want to show us today and uh, may you receive glory and honor in all that uh, we say and do in Jesus name we pray amen Okay, let's open up Leviticus um, 15, and today I'll be reading from the online version. Um, I'm, I'm at BibleGateway.com, and um, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Um, okay, Leviticus 15. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Any man who has bodily discharge is ceremonially unclean. This defilement is caused by his discharge. Whether the discharge continues or stops, in either case, the man is unclean. Any bed on which the man with the discharge lies and anything on which he sits will be ceremonially unclean. So if you touch the man's bed, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you'll remain unclean until evening. And if you sit where the man with the discharge has sat, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. And if you touch the man with discharge, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until that evening. And if the man spits on you, the man, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. Any saddle blanket on which the man rides will be ceremonially unclean. And if you touch anything that was under the man, you will be unclean until evening. And you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water. And you will remain unclean until that evening. And if the man touches you without first rinsing his hands, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water. And you will remain unclean until evening. Any clay pots the man touches will be broken. And any wooden utensil he touches will be rinsed with water. When the man with a discharge is healed, he must count off seven days for the period of purification. Then he must wash his clothes and bathe himself in fresh water, and he will be ceremonially unclean. On the eighth day, he must get two turtle doves and two young pigeons, come before the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle and give his offerings to the priest. The priest will offer one bird for the sin offering and the other for the burnt offering. Through the process, the priest will purify the man before the Lord for his discharge. Whenever a man has an emission of semen, he must bathe his entire body in water and he will remain ceremonially unclean till the next evening. Any clothing or leather with semen on it must be washed in water and it will remain unclean until evening. After a man and a woman have sexual intercourse, they must each bathe in water and they will remain unclean until the next evening. Whenever a woman has her menstrual period, she will be ceremonially unclean for seven days. Anyone who touches her during that time will be unclean until evening. Anything which a woman lies or sits on during the time of her period will be unclean. And if and any of you who touch her bed, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. And if you touch any object that she sat on, you must wash your clothes and have and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. This includes her bed and any other object she has sat on. You will be unclean until the evening if you touch it. If a man has sexual intercourse with her and her blood touches him, her menstrual impurity will be transmitted to him. He will remain unclean for seven days, and any bed on which he lies on will be unclean. If a woman has a flow of blood for many days that has been unrelated to her menstrual period, or if the blood continues beyond normal period, she is normal, ceremonially unclean. As during her menstrual period, the woman will be unclean as long as the, the, the discharge continues. Any bed she lays on and any object she sits during that time will be unclean, just as during her normal menstrual period. And if you touch these things, you will be ceremonially unclean. You must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. When the woman's bleeding stops, she must count off seven days 
days. Then she will be ceremonially clean. On the eighth day, she must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons and present them to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will offer one of the sin offerings and other for the burnt offering. Through this process, the priest will purify her before the Lord and for the ceremony impurity caused by her bleeding. This is how you will guard the people of Israel from ceremony uncleanness. Otherwise, they would die, for their impurity would defile my tabernacle that stands among them. These are the instructions for dealing with anyone who has a bodily discharge. A man who is unclean because of an emission of semen or a woman during her menstrual period. This applies to any man or woman who has bodily discharge and to a man who has sexual intercourse with a woman who is ceremonially unclean. Okay, in Leviticus 16. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons, who died after they entered the Lord's presence and burned the wrong kind of fire before him. The Lord said to Moses, Warn your brother, Aaron, do not enter the most holy place behind the inner curtain whenever he chooses. If he does, he will die. For the ark's cover, the place of atonement, is there, and I myself am present in the cloud above the atonement cover. When Aaron enters the sanctuary area, he must follow these instructions fully. He must bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He must put on his linen tunic and the linen undergarments worn next to his body. He must tie the linen sash around his waist and then put the linen turban on his head. These are the sacred garments, so he must bathe himself in water before he puts them on. Aaron must take the community of Israel to men goats for sin offering and for a ram burnt offering. Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. Then he must take two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. He is to cast sacred lots to determine which goat to be reserved as an offering to the Lord and which will carry the sins of the people to the wilderness of Israel. Aaron will then present as a sin offering the goat chosen by Lot for the Lord. The other goat, the scapegoat, chosen by Lot to be sent away, which will be kept alive, standing before the Lord. When it's sent away to Azazel, Azazel, in the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right with the Lord. Aaron will present his own bow as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. After he has slaughtered the bull, as a sin offering, he will, fill, um, he will fill an incense burner with burning coals from the altar that stands before the Lord. Then he will take two handfuls of fragrant powder incense and will carry the burner and the incense behind the inner curtain. There in the Lord's presence will he put the incense on the burning coals so that the cloud of incense will rise over the ark's cover. The place of atonement that resists that rests on the ark of the covenant. If he follows these instructions, he will not die. Then he must take some of the blood of the bull, dip his finger in it, and sprinkle it on the east side of the atonement cover. He must sprinkle blood seven times with his finger in front of the atonement cover. Then Aaron must slaughter the first goat as a sin offering for the people and carry its blood behind the inner curtain. Then he will be he will sprinkle the goat's blood over the atonement cover and in front of it, just as he did with the bull's blood. Through this process, he will purify the most holy place, and he will do the same for the entire tabernacle because of the defiling sin and the rebellion of the Israelites. No one else is allowed inside the tabernacle when Aaron enters it for the purification ceremony in the most holy place. No one can enter until he comes out again after purifying himself, his family, and all the congregation of Israel, making them right with the Lord. Then Aaron will come out to purify the altar that stands before the Lord. He will do this by taking some of the blood from the bull and the goat and putting it on each of the horns of the altar. Then he must sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times over the altar. In this way, he will cleanse it from the Israel's defilement and make it holy. When Aaron has finished purifying the most holy place and the tabernacle and the altar, he must present the live goat. He will lay both of his hands on the goat's head and confess over it 
all the wickedness, rebellion, and sins of the people of Israel. In this way, he will transfer the people's sin to the head of the goat. Then the man especially chosen for the task will drive the goat into the wilderness. As the goat goes into, uh, into the wilderness, it will carry the people's sins upon itself and into a desolate land. Escape road. When Aaron goes back to the tabernacle, he must take off linen garments he was wearing when he entered the most holy place. He must leave the garments there. He must bathe himself with water in the sacred place, put on his regular garment, and go out to, the, to sacrifice a burnt offering for himself and a burnt offering for the people. Through this process, he will purify himself and the people, making them right with the Lord. He must then burn all the fat of the sin offering of the altar. The man chosen to drive the scapegoat into the wilderness of Az Azazel must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. Then he may return to the camp. The bull and the goat presented as sin offerings whose blood Aaron takes to the most holy place for the purification ceremony will be carried outside the camp. The animal's hides, internal organs, and dung are all to be burned. The man who burns them washes clothes, must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water before returning to the camp. On the tenth day of the appointed month in the early autumn, you must deny yourselves. Neither native-born Israelites nor foreigners living among you may do any kind of work. This is a permanent law for you. On that day, offerings of purification will be made for you. You will be purified in the Lord's presence from all your sins. It will be a Sabbath day of the complete rest for you. You must deny yourselves. This is a permanent law for you. In future generations, the purification ceremony will be performed by the priests who have been anointed and ordained to serve as high priest in place of his ancestor Aaron. He will put on the holy linen garments and purify the most holy place the tabernacle the altar the priest the entire congregation this is a permanent law for you to purify the people of israel from their sins making them right with the lord once each year moses followed all these instructions exactly as the lord has commanded him well i don't know if you guys have heard of um, the holy land here in orlando florida we have this theme park and it's called holy land and it's um it's it's i don't know how big it is but you can go on to the web and look up um holy land and it's really really unique because i have a, an annual membership there and um uh, over by they have different sections um of um the stuff that goes on in the Bible and there's this one place where um, there's this one show that they have like three or four times throughout the day and um, they would have the actual tabernacle and they would have a priest that's dressed up just like Aaron and it's like a 15 minute show and it tells us exactly how Aaron gets dressed and goes in into the tabernacle and how he um, does all this stuff um, that we've been reading about about cleaning his hands his his legs and his, his clothes and all that good stuff maybe more than 15 minutes <laughs> but anyway it's something to check out if you're here in Orlando Florida I know I'm not getting commissions for this <laughs> all right I hope you guys have a great day and um, I will see you tomorrow for day number 48